Hey, it's Mindful Monday. And this is what I just want to say to you, that just because your uniqueness doesn't make sense to people around you, doesn't mean it doesn't make sense at all. God gave you your personality with purpose in mind. And I don't mean dysfunctional behavior, but your personality as an individual. So listen, you've got to hold fast to your uniqueness. Look, we are in a season, I call it the lookalike season. But don't look like someone or don't look like what is acceptable to the masses just to get lost. It's my mindful Monday message for you today. Because we live in a day which tells us that you're special, you're significant, you're likable, you're friendly, you're effective. If you've got loads of friends, if you've got loads of followers, and if you are a certain type of person. But when you strip all of that social status, when you strip all of that social demands down to meaningful relationships, tell me, who and what have you got? The Bible says that godliness with contentment is a great gain. And for me, setting myself free and being comfortable with who I am, it's part of that great gain for me. Because the thing is, the more we embrace our uniqueness, the freer we are to be whom God wants us to be. So on this Mindful Monday, be intentional and be deliberate about not looking like someone trying to look like someone else or trying to be what someone wants you to be. It's just like putting a square peg in a round hole. You won't fit in. And truth be told, you will never be the right one for the wrong person. It doesn't matter how much you try. You will never, ever be the right person for the wrong one. Yeah. When I, I, I remember Ty a while ago you know one of the things that i used to hear people frown and say about me was that oh cheska is too sensitive cheska is too emotional oh my god <laughs> i used to wrestle with that statement so much that i tried so hard not to come across as sensitive and the the, the thing is the more i tried the more frustrated i got the more I went to the extremes of being sensitive and it didn't even look good on me. That was just not me. And as I kept trying and I, I, I was getting frustrated over and over, there was this day that I went in for a leadership meeting. And I remember in that leadership meeting, I asked the man of God, how to deal with this? That was a question that I got up to ask that as a leader, being sensitive as people, usually refer me to me how do i balance it how do i deal with it and then the man just looked at me and said jessica you are a worshiper and that comes with being sensitive ah what did you just say did somebody just give me a different dimension of my personality as a sensitive person that was not said in the wrong way gosh and from that day that was the end of the aggro with being a sensitive person by people's standards suddenly I just embraced it braced the, uh, that personality and boy was I effective oh yes it was like a light bulb had been switched on in my life there was a sudden redirection where my sensitivity heightened to people's needs, what people go through, being sensitive enough to show up for people, to know what to say and what not to say when people are going through pain. And if you know me, you know you can't beat me to it. And as I embraced it, everyone who came along now appreciated that side of me. I'm not sure if I stopped being uncomfortably sensitive for people though, but as far as my memory can recollect, I never had anyone around me making me feel guilty for being sensitive. Maybe I stopped noticing them, 
But the next thing I knew, I just saw people or me being surrounded by people who appreciated how sensitive I was in a positive way though. And I didn't have to hide it anymore. I embraced that personality and I began nurturing it, nurturing it. I began tweaking here and there. I began to gain clarity of who I was, that I was a deeply relational person. And that's just who I am, that I was very protective of my loved ones, that I'm somebody who, who guards my space intentionally. I'm somebody who, who is an encourager, who is a cheerleader for people's journey. And I will just be there for you. I... As I embraced who who I was as a sensitive person, I also found out who, who I wasn't. That I was not a superhuman being. That I was not everyone's cup of tea. That I don't function in just any environment, just any un unstructured environment. I need structure to function. I've come across people who would say that, oh, wherever you put me, I flourish. Praise God for their lives, but not me. And that was okay. You just need to put me in a structured soil. Don't even water me. And I'm good to go. I also realize that I'm not called to everyone. I'm not created to be liked by everyone. And if I'm not called to you, guess what? We won't last. I will annoy you. My behavior will get on your nerves. You will see me as a threat. And I will see you as a threat as well. And so that was it. I also found out how... I was never going to be some things. I was never going to be the insensitive type. I tried. But I knew I was never going to be that person. I was never going to be the type you can put in a box. And I had to make peace with that. Just by embracing my uniqueness. So listen. The right person will embrace the things that you once felt you had to hide. The things that you feel you have to hide to be acceptable, the right people would embrace it. Not everyone has to embrace how you are wired. And by how you are wired, I don't mean being like the type who opens her gob and say things anyhow and go like, ex with the excuse, that's how I am, hello. That's not how you're wired. That's a dysfunction and you need to work on it. So yes, you are too emotional. Yes, you're too strong. Yes, you're too sensitive. Yes, you, 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 you care so much about people that you, you keep going around and it's almost like sometimes you, you walk around poking your nose in people's business and that's just who you are and it looks as if you can't help yourself. Yes, you speak up for yourself and you tell the truth. And all the labels that we tend to put on each other to make ourselves feel better or to make others feel guilty. But hey... What we all don't get sometimes is that what you have been made for requires you to be that kind of person. Did you hear that? What God has made you for, the purpose that he has in mind for you, that requires you to be sensitive. That requires you to be the type that when you go and they stab you at the back, you still find yourself again going into that relationship where what you offer is is thrown in your face and yes i'm not saying be a doormat but sometimes you know yourself if you are that type of person you've tried you try not to be helpful to people and yet you can't that's who you are that is just who you are but you'd have people criticizing you criticism is good i always say that for me personally <clears throat> pardon me Nobody can criticize me more than I criticize myself. Whatever criticism you have, I've already given myself. God help me. I'm my number one critic. So criticism is good. But sometimes, guys, we need to be careful about accepting criticism from people regarding how we are made. Especially when it's coming from people who have no revelation about what you've been made for. They have no clue of your purpose in life you don't have enough information about me to be judging or to be labeling me what i've been made for requires me to be empathetic requires me to be sensitive requires me to be empathetic sensitive sensitive so i can feel the pain of others 
It requires me to be strong and to set my face as a flint. It requires me to be a talkative, to be that type who is defensive so I can defend the defenseless. That might be your story. Embrace you. Allow people to know who you are. You don't need to hide it. And be content with who you are and who you are not. And maybe who you are never going to be. Be good with being you. Embrace that uniqueness. Have a mindful Monday. <laughs>